Well, it's time to give you my best metal albums of June. And this month we saw a pretty good month of metal. From power metal, to black metal, to even heavy metal, we saw some great bands releasing fantastic albums. And you know what? My most anticipated albums did not disappoint at all this month. We got bands from Halloween all the way to Dark Throne. This is the best metal albums of June. So before I begin, pop your favorite albums of, of June 2021. And you know what? Let's get started. Coming in at number 10 is the, a band called Sebatus, and they are from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They are a technical black death metal band as well, and they produced an album called Phantom Indigo, released on Willowtip Records. This album is a pretty good album. Now, the only main tripe for this album is the actual fucking artwork, which I'm not a really big fan of, but the rest of the album is absolutely fantastic. A mix between a noisium and even pure triumphant, very dissonant in tone. It's a black and death metal album with the vocals main starring on this incredible incredible harsh aggressive vocals the learned response is an absolutely fucking fantastic song along with Todd Autology, the way he screams at the end and you got songs like Phantom Indigo just really enjoyed the technical elements love the guitar work and the drumming is on point it also conveys a lot of emotion within the vocals the vocals are the main star on Sepatus Phantom Indigo and yeah there's no doubt I actually bought this album when it was first released and this was released on June 2nd it's an absolute fucking banger so Sepatus Phantom Indigo is sitting at number 10 next up is Illustrium now Illustrium are a, a progressive technical death metal band and their lyrical things mainly focus on psychology, personal struggles and obviously death. Surprise, surprise, Illustrium are also from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and we saw a fantastic album by this band. Although it is not their best album per se, I still love the album A Monument to Silence. Now, they do incorporate more mellow death elements on this. Come on, man, the hollow egg sounds something out of like Only for the Week by In Flames, especially that melody. Love the vocals, the vocals are so damn intense. Love the odd time signatures, quite technical in tone. But yeah, this focuses more on that mellow death side. It's progressive mellow death, you could say, but it's not as good as Absence of Clarity. I and a tunnel to Eden was fantastic as well. Although I feel this is one of their uh, weakest releases, a monument to silence, Illustrium still holds true to what they are. Guitar solos on this as well, you were getting. But yeah, a monument to silence by Illustrium is a must listen album for June. Next up is Eremit and the album bearer of many names and they hail from Germany. In case you don't know Eremit are a doom and sludge metal band. They incorporate more atmospheric black metal as well especially on bearer of many names. Now there are only three songs on this LP. One song running about 30 minutes featuring the Ahab lead singer. This album is very good but it is not their best work. I love the album Carry of Weight, which was their debut album, and even the EP was fantastic. Bear of Many Names comprises of a lot of repetitive riffs that do get stuck in your head, and the melodies are quite infectious. But at times, this can be quite repetitive. But I love repetitive shit, and I love how the melodies do get fucking stuck in your head. There are some really awesome moments, some really drony and doomy sort of fucking guitar, but the production is incredibly slow. Sludgy. No, this is not like Ahab. No, this is not like Evoken. This is a whole kettle of fish, baby. A whole different fucking kettle of fish. And what can I say about Aramant? Bear of many names. It focuses on many different lyrical themes, such as mythological realm. And yeah, so they are from Germany and they produced a pretty good solid album, but it's not the best album of June. Next up is a band I cannot fucking pronounce, and we're talking about this band and their album, This. So, uh, 
what can I say? We're just so many layers upon layers. This is a very atmospheric album. The vocals are incredibly intense. It, over the layers of atmospheric black metal, along with even Funeral Doom, at times it's incredibly doomy and eerie and frightening to listen to. But the vocals, the female vocals on this album are just so damn good. Olva, Olga, I think her name is, fantastic vocalist, but his vocals are just brilliant. Vladimir Frif, that's his name, he is a one-man band, producing such fantastic guitar work, fantastic atmospheric vibes. This is a must-listen album if you like atmospheric doom black metal. Definitely check out this album. Fucking love the artwork as well. The artwork is so damn good, one of the best. I just love how there is a fox that is slowly decomposing in just a layering of skulls. Fucking fantastic album, check it out. Next up is a Neverland's black metal band. We got Osiart and the album Palgrim Sword. Now I have mentioned this album a few times now and what can I say, this is just a brilliant LP. It focuses more on the black metal side but there are some beautiful angelic moments as well, especially the vocal work on this. The vocal work is so damn good. With some very atmospheric layering guitars along with the drums that are so impactful in tone that will hit you in the fucking face if you could feel the drums with the production that is quite clean in tone along with the atmospheric vibe the vocals are the main star very similar to the album like Sepetus except OCR Palgrim Sword is a lot better in my opinion with songs running about 10 to 11 minutes with some amazing guitar melody with some beautiful vocals these epic clean vocals that are so damn clean in tone that you will absolutely fucking love I love the melodies on this they are quite infectious in tone it's a must listen album in june if you like atmospheric black metal next up is one of the biggest bands one of the biggest bands in history in especially in the black metal scene we're talking about the norwegian black metal band dark throne and their brand new album eternal hails which is definitely one of the most different diverse albums by by dark throne this album has it all, from crust punk, to black metal, to even death metal, to even doom metal. This album has it all. Although this album could be quite simple for a Dark Throne album, it still holds true to that Dark Throne sound, except this album is much more doomier and darker. Recycling the same old riffs that are quite repetitive in tone, but the melodies just as the melodies do get stuck in your head. Hello, what about Hate Cloak? The first single in Hate Cloak gets stuck in your head because it sounds like something out of Master Reality by Black Sabbath. Songs like Wake Up the Awakened, Voyage to a North Pole Adrift, and Lost a Cane City of Your Praka. We got some synth melodies that just get stuck in your head, and a doomy sort of laden atmosphere as well. There are just so many surprises along the way, and the vocals, vocals by Nocturno Coldo, oh, so damn good. The production is just very tinny and thin. It's definitely got that black metal production, but would I call this black metal? Don't think I'd call this black metal. This doesn't remind me of black metal, man. It doesn't. But this is a very different album by Dark Throne. Panzer Faust was pretty doomy, but Old Star was also quite doomy as well. I love how Dark Throne are channeling the inner Black Sabbath on this album. And yes, they create some doomy vibes. And this Dark this is Dark Throne's most slowest and doomiest album. And I fucking love it, I really do, and I just love how this album doesn't sound the same to any other Dark Throne album out there. Next up is a very fun heavy metal album. We got Awaken the Thunder. Hey, Awaken it. Oh my God. It is Hammer King and the album Hammer King. The self titled album, in case you don't know, Hammer King are a German band hailing from Kallislautern, Reinhard Palatinate. They are a heavy metal, power metal, thrash metal band and they incorporate epic fantasy war lyrical themes. If if you like epic sort of metal, if you like heavy metal sounding very similar to fucking 
Iron Maiden, you're gonna fucking well love this, which is so many amazing songs along the way. I absolutely adore it. This is one of my favorite albums of the year. Got songs like Awaken the Thunder, Baptized by the Hammer, Onward to Victory, Victory, with So and Sorcery. Holy shit. Absolutely love Hammer King. I think they are a fantastic band. Oh, I'm gonna have a heart attack. You know what? I should have moved this a little bit higher, but there's a few other albums that I absolutely fucking love it a little bit more, but Hammer King is a must listen if you like heavy metal. And you know what? Even this guy, Zach D Productions, likes this album. But you know what? There are just so many amazing songs like Atlantis, We Are The Kingdom, Into The Storm, Ashes to Ashes. You know what? This album is so damn sing-alongable. I love it, this band. I, I think they are just so damn good. Beside Will Carry Us Home is such an awesome album as well. Every single album by them are just so damn solid. They're a consistent heavy metal band. We move on to one of the most anticipated albums of the year by a lot of people. And I'll tell you what, Halloween and a self-titled album featuring all three lead vocalists from the past Kai Hansen, Michael Kiske, and Andy Derris created the self-titled album Halloween. And what can I say? This is, in my opinion, I haven't heard all of Halloween's uh, discography yet, but I gotta say, this album clicked for me. For me to get into Halloween. This is by far my favorite Halloween album. It really is. This is an earworm. You've got songs like Out For The Glory, which sounds like something out of the introduction of South Of Heaven by Slayer, Fear Of The Falling, Best Time, how catchy is that song? Mass Pollution, Angels Rise Without Chains, Indestructible, Robot King, along with Cyanide Down In The Dumps, and Skyfall, I Fell From The Sky. Oh, this is an absolutely fantastic album. I just love how Halloween, in my opinion, just don't sound that power metal. It's more of a heavy metal dominance on this album. I absolutely fucking love it. Love the vocals by all three vocalists and the guitar work is so damn good, which is continuous earwormy melodies. The melodies are so damn infectious. I love Robot King, which has been one of my favorite songs off the album. But then you got Save My Hide, the, the the one to end off the album and save my heart is so damn catchy especially that guitar if i just say my heart yeah halloween self-titled album is could be my number one album of the month but of course there are two other albums that I've been playing the most. And uh, the next one is the brand new Pestilence album. Yes, Pestilence, a Neverland's band. And they are a death metal band, of course. And you know what? They are a cosmic death metal band, especially on their new album, Ixtivim. If that's how you, Ix, Ixtivim or Ixtium or something like that. I can't even pronounce the fucking album, album title, but yeah. XTM is so damn good. It reminds me of the album Spheres, their, their earlier albums, um, Testimony of the Ancients. The guitar work is so damn good. You know, Patrick's vocals on this are just fantastic. His harsh, aggressive vocals, his guttural vocals in tone, and his high shrieks as well. The riffages are quite are so damn infectious, and the drumming is on point. Songs like Sepaternus, along with Mortiferum, the solos on this are so damn good. Now, this has a thrash metal dominance on this album it does and it's got the death metal this is this reminds me of something out of like spheres with the really spacey sort of atmospheric vibe how every single fucking song just blends into each other i absolutely love the album cover the album cover is so damn good it reminds me of the album store train i just love how this at times does sound very thrashy this is a fantastic fucking album it's brutal in tone at times and it's just one hell of a ride. It does remind me of that old Pestilence sound as well. At times it reminds me of something out of like Consuming Impulse. His vocals are very dry and harsh, very sounding very similar to um, Martin Van Duren's vocals. So yeah, what can I say? Exidium by Pestilence is one of my favorite albums of the year. 
up to it to be one of my favorite death metal albums of the year as well. And finally, and finally, my number one album of June 2021, and up to it to be one of my favorite black metal albums of the year. We got Fire and Hole by the Waters of Awakening. And probably a lot of you people would know this is my favorite album of of the of uh, June and possibly my favorite album of the year. Nada Marked Productions has done it again, producing a fantastic epic black metal album. If you like Aldemar, Callum and Brood, or even The Summoning, you're gonna fucking well love this. The songs are so damn good. It's very synthy, this album. The keyboard's so damn prominent. And the vocals are amazing as well. You got black metal vocals and you got the clean, beautiful vocals as well. Songs like Forgotten Legacy, the fucking chorus. I'm not gonna sing it again because I've, I've sung the chorus so many times, but the choruses are so damn catchy. And then you just got incredible melodies that just get stuck in your head. They really do. It's infectious in tone. It's an album I cannot put down. It's an album I cannot put down. Every time I want to listen to an album, I want to listen to Fire and Hole. And I will be lying to myself if I didn't put Fire and Hole at number one because this album is, in my opinion, close to a masterpiece. The, just the melodies are amazing. They are. It's atmospheric, epic black metal. It's not as heavy as Aldemar or Summoning or even Callum and Brood. It's got a good mix of subtle black metal along with heavy. There are some heavier moments as well, like Ashes of the Golden Hall, which would be one of my favorite songs off the album. But this is Lord of the Rings lore. This is J.R. Token's world, and holy shit, it absolutely fucking works. The Whispering Shadow is an amazing way to end off the album. Running about 55 minutes, that 55 minutes will just fly by. Will fly by, man. And Fire and Halt by the Waters of Awakening is my number one June album of 2021. So guys, that's it for the best metal albums of June. What did you think of my list? Do you agree or disagree with my opinion? Pop your favorite albums down below and I will see you in the next one.